Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how I made this ambrosia maple end grain cutting board. So first I'm going to start off with um, cutting this 6 inch wide board into 3 separate pieces at 26 inches long. So here you can already start to see the pattern that we're after, those gray and brown splotches there. For those of you that don't know, they actually are from ambrosia beetles. So what they do is after the maple tree dies, they go and, and invade the wood and cause those distresses. Now I'm planting these boards down, um, just trying to get them flat here, but you can see that there's actually some curly maple in this lumber, which is a shame that we won't actually get to admire its true beauty because it'll be the end grain, so you won't actually see it. Now I'm just cutting a square edge to reference off here. And after this, I'm going to be cutting these boards into two and a quarter strips here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm after sort of a brick pattern. Um, this, this just helps add some extra spice to the board, I think, in my opinion. One thing I really need to upgrade on in my shop is a better dust collection system. Basically, I'm just using a shop back here. And you can see it's not doing a very good job as the sawdust is still spewing all over me. Once I get all the strips cut, um, I think there's about nine of them in total. I'm just going back and misorganizing them and trying to create a random pattern. Now it's time for the first of many glue ups in this project. And this is one of the reasons that makes these end grain cutting boards so tedious and time consuming. Now I'm doing two separate glue ups here, two panels. And the reason I'm doing this is because my planer is only 12 inches wide and it won't be able to fit a 18 inch wide board through it, obviously. So um, I'm trying to make sure I get these as flat as possible so I can take off as little as possible through the planer. Now throwing some glue on there. Um, this glue bottle that I'm using, I've seen a lot of popular guys use it. Um, I got it for Amazon for about 10 bucks, and honestly, I think it is a little overrated. Now, the next day, once these are dry, I'm taking them out of the clamps here, and I'm going to be planing each board down, and basically, they are going right back into the clamps after that. When I'm running these boards to the planer, I'm trying to keep them as thick as I can. In the end, this will be the final width of the cutting board. I know that doesn't really make much sense, but it definitely will later. Also here, I'm actually squaring up each side on a panel. This will just save me some time in the end later, so I won't have to go back and do this after. For the second glue up here, I'm trying to get it as flat as possible. Um, taking the clamps off, I didn't get it quite perfect. So I'm just taking the belt sander here with like some 60 grit sandpaper. It doesn't really matter if I scuff it up too much. Just trying to take some of that off to get it flat. A drum sander would definitely come in handy here, but unfortunately I cannot afford one of those at the moment. So what you just saw there, I was drawing an arrow just so after I cut these strips, I can tell which piece belongs where. Once I have all my strips cut to a roughly two inches on the table saw, I'm going back and just flipping them up. And this is where you actually see what the finished end grain cutting board will look like. So it's back into the clamps for the third time now. Now 
now I'm just running this through the planer here. I know you're technically not supposed to run end grain through the planer, but I haven't had any problems yet, so I'm going to continue to do it until I have an issue with it. Now here I'm uh, just squaring up the edges. And then basically once I have everything square, I will be taking it over to my router table to put a 3 16 inch round over on all the edges. After that, I will be switching to a dome bit in order to put a juice groove in here. So what I do here for the juice groove is set my fence to an inch away and I have stop locks set up that I know where to start and stop. This part of the process is definitely scary because I can't really tell what's going on. I just have to trust my tools. You can see here, once I flip it over, it turned out just how I wanted to. The only issue is, is there's a couple burn marks in the corner, so I'll just have to take some sandpaper back and try to remove those. After this, I'm routing in the handles into each end. Uh, for this, I'm just using a three quarter inch straight bit. And you can see I had some stop lock set up. Um, now is the very fun part of the process is just sanding and sanding and sanding. The thing about end grain is, is it requires a lot more sanding than just flat straight grain. Um, here I'm just wet sanding because if you don't do this, Usually after the first wash, it might get a little fuzzy and that is something you don't want. Next is my favorite part of the process is getting the brand on here. And I honestly think this pulls the whole board together. Now to throw some finish on there, I'm just using a food safe mineral oil, um, soaking that in. The end grain takes in a lot of oil. so. Uh, you can't really put too much on here. Then after that, I'm going to be pre-drilling and just putting some little feet on there I got from Amazon. And after that, it is all done. So you can see the final reveal. Now, I actually made another one of these boards beforehand, and as you can see, it had a lot of more figure in the end grain. Sadly, I can't really control and see what the end grain looks like when I buy the board. But anyways, thank you all for making it to the end of the video. If you guys think you learned something, a like and subscription would really help out and mean a lot. Thanks again.